Welcome to the Cinema Rag, where we celebrate the greatest and worst in Hollywood films and their most self-indulgent, narcissistic actors, directors, and producers. Here, we will laud and malign Hollywood's seedier elements with levity and humor. They love cinema as much as anyone does, and they've been talking about it for over 30 years. Time to get trashy. Here's Gregory and May. Hello, everybody. This is Gregory, and welcome back to another episode of the Cinema Rag. I hope you're doing well today. The audio is not going to be as good as it normally is because I'm recording this without my mixer because I was not able to use the mixer earlier today. But I think the audio should be good enough if you turn up your volume all the way. So today we're going to talk about Tom Hanks, one of the iconic American actors of the last half century or so. And I have hot takes on Tom Hanks. Uh, May and I did not yet do the overrated actors over the age of 50, and I think there's quite a bit of them, and I no doubt would have included Hanks in this list. Now, some would say Tom Hanks is top three best actors of the last 50 years. And on one level, you can see why. He has two Academy Awards back to back for Philadelphia and for Forrest Gump back in the early mid 90s. And he's been nominated. But I would tell you, look, Tom Hanks, and we, we kind of talk about it in that episode that I did on the difference between lead male actors and the chameleons. And I talk about it. And I list Hanks as one of these guys, along with, honestly, Brad Pitt, Tom Cruise, Matthew McConaughey, Paul Rudd, Gosling. These guys are leading men, but they have no range. Juxtapose that with people like Michael Fassbender, Christian Bale, Gary Oldman, these are like legit actors that have immense amount of range, but they're not as famous. Now, I think what made Hanks so successful in his early years was, and it still is kind of the same thing, he is mid-America. Everybody loves Tom Hanks because he kind of looks and embodies kind of the Frank Capra throwback world of America back in the It's a Wonderful Life, Mr. Chips Goes to Hollywood kind of world. And he does have that kind of feeling of being Jimmy Stewart, speaking of Capra films. He just kind of has that all-Americana persona. And some of that is also portrayed in the, in the movies that he chooses to do. But if you look at his breakout roles, and look, this tells you how old I am, because I remember Bosom Buddies, the TV show where he and Peter Scolari were pretending to be women, and they had a crush on Donna Dixon, who was later Dan Aykroyd's wife. He has comedic chops, or certainly he did when he was younger. And then he was able to parlay that in some of his boyish charm into into what I guess you would call the imperial period of Tom Hanks, which was the 90s. And then he just went off the deep end. If you look most of the last 20 years, he has had tank after tank after tank after tank. And some of it is he doesn't have a lot of range. To him, doing weird American accents is range. But the guy can't be in a British period movie nor does he have any interest to that because he, I don't think he's capable of doing it. So some would say that he is one of the greatest American actors of all time, or greatest actors in general ever. And I'm just blown away by this, blown away. So let's look at his filmography really fast. So as I mentioned, he kind of busts in the scenes in the mid 80s with Splash, great movie with Daryl Hannah, and uh, man, Eugene Levy. How long has Eugene Levy been around? Then he does Bachelor Party. That's a, that's a fun kind of early 80s rollick. Then, you know, he does Money Pit and just, just Dragnet. He really breaks big with Big, 1988, playing the kid who turns into an adult. And that's what really 
I guess people start taking him seriously. They kind of saw him as a comedic actor, but that's what really got him in the kind of the higher level. He does the Burbs and Turner and Hooch the next year, Joe versus the Volcano, his first time with Meg Ryan, Bonfire the Vanities. That was a complete bomb. I wouldn't say it was Hanks's fault. That also had uh, Bruce Willis. And then he enters his what what I would mention his imperial period. So look, this is what he does. 92 to 2000, League of Their Own, Sleepless in Seattle, probably the best, most loved rom-com of all time. And very profitable too, by the way, it did, it did very well. Philadelphia, Forrest Gump, Apollo 13, Toy Story, the voice of Woody. That thing you do, small role, but we won't count that. Saving Private Ryan, You've Got Mail, Toy Story 2, The Green Mile, Castaway. That's impressive. That is very impressive. But if you look at these roles that he's doing, no range. You could say Philadelphia, did he deserve the Academy Award for that? I think in retrospect, no. Let's look who he was against in that year for 1990. Daniel Day-Lewis in The Name of the Father. I do remember that movie. Lawrence Fishburne in What's Love Got to Do With It. Anthony Hopkins in Remains of the Day. Liam Neeson in Schindler's List. Man, this is like a who's who. I would not have given it to Tom Hanks. No way. Fishburne is amazing in What's Love Got to Do With It as Ike Turner. Anthony Hopkins Great in Remains of the Day with Emma Thompson. The, the repressed emotions, they like each other, they can't admit it. Liam Neeson in Schindler's List. Come on, I would take any of these dudes over Hanks. Then the following year, he wins it for Forrest Gump. Forrest Gump has not aged well. And that performance is kind of like the first of what I guess they would call today, the special ed roles that later you saw. Well, I guess, I guess you know, probably Hoffman did Rain Man first. Yeah, that was in 88. But then you, you see Hanks do it. You see Sean Penn do it. I Am Sam. And that movie is sentimental but has not aged well. And I think most people recognize that. And Hanks is playing a caricature in that movie. But he's going against Morgan Freeman for Shawshank and John Travolta in Pulp Fiction. Again, I'd probably give it to both of those guys. It was also Paul Newman for Nobody's Fool, which I don't remember that movie. I wanted to let you know about the other feeds that we have here at the Eclectico Gregorio channel. We have The Awakened Man, which has been around since the spring of 2017, which mostly focuses on having men and women reach their full potential by knowing about toxins in the food, big pharma cover-ups, and ways to biohack your life. We also have the Female Holistic Health Apothecary, which is a channel that originally started as an essential oils channel. And there's about 65 essential oils that are broken down over there. And then more recently, about two years ago, I just pivoted and made it more about female holistic health and naturopathic health because I'm a big proponent of let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. And lastly, we have the Confessions of an Obese Child feed which I started in January 2017, which chronicles what it's like to be an overweight child. I was an overweight child and I lost over 100 pounds and kept it off for 30 plus years. So it's a channel, like if you have disordered eating or had a dysfunctional childhood, how to deal with that, how to, how to function with that, and also discusses and I interview various people that have a similar background of dysfunctional childhood, binge eating, binge drinking, and how to deal with that. And there's a lot of great interviews over there. So those are the three other feeds at the Eclectico Gregorio channel. Now let's get back to the show. And Nigel Hawthorne, who was a British actor, who it was in The Madness of King George the Third. I remember actually seeing that movie because I do love my my British history. But even then, I would not have given it to Hanks. And then, then he gets nominated two more times, one for Saving Private Ryan. That is the controversial year of Shakespeare and love winning. Uh, but look, he's great in that. But again, wh wh who is he in that? He's a teacher. He's a teacher who is grudgingly called to fight, and he's playing Mr. Americana. 
But that was the year also that had Roberto Benigni winning in Life is Beautiful, Ian McKellen, God and Monsters, Nick Nolte in Affliction, and Edward Norton in American History X. Norton was young. He wasn't going to win that. But, I mean, you could argue maybe that he deserved it more for that movie because that movie was so influential. But then he, in 2000, he gets nominated for Castaway. But, yeah, no. Russell Crowe deserved it for Gladiator by far. So, look. You look after that period of his career, and to me, it's just all downhill. Bland performances of nothing after Castaway. Catch Me If You Can, great Spielberg movie. DiCaprio's amazing. He's pulling some weird accent. Tom Hanks in that movie as the FBI guy chasing him. Lady Killers, 2004, horrible movie. The Terminal, 2004, horrible movies, pulling some weird European, Eastern European accent. Just horrible. Da Vinci Code, he does the Robert Langdon role three times. I like Angels and, and Demons because it has to do with the papacy, but uh, overall, not really that supported. I mean, those, those movies did well, but again, nothing special by him. Charlie Wilson's War, eh. Larry Crown, that's the one with Julia Roberts in 2011. And Cloud Atlas, 2012, he's pulling some weird accent in that movie. I think that's an Aronofsky movie, if I'm not mistaken. Captain Phillips, that's the one about the uh, boat being kidnapped uh, or hijacked. And Saving Mr. Banks, where he plays Disney. Mm. Bridge of Spies. Now he's getting into more like dad movies, like movies that dads are like. Bridge of Spies is great. You know, I think that's a fine movie. Nothing special that he's doing. He's just playing himself. Sully, the one about the, the pilot, 2016, playing himself. Inferno, Robert Landon, that's the last one, the one that takes place in Florence. Eh. Greyhound, 2020. And eh. Beautiful Day in the Neighbor, where he plays Mr. Rogers, 2019. And eh. News of the World, where he, a Western, nobody saw it. Finch, 2021, during COVID lockdown, nobody saw it. Then you get to Elvis. He plays Tom Parker, the colonel. He is horrendous in that movie. Horrendous. Then he's in A Man Called Otto. And eh. So look, say what you want about Hanks. Hanks is part of Americana, but let's be real. Hanks is an overrated actor. He is an overrated actor. He plays himself in the majority of movies. And look, he can be funny like in League of Their Own and certainly in his 80s work like Splash and Bachelor Party. And he played that kind of insouciant, that, that kind of childhood naivete and big. But as a whole, he cannot be considered one of the best actors of the last 50 years. You could say that he was one of the most profitable actors in that for about a decade if he was opening a movie or he was in it it would do well but that's different that's leading man stuff that's different than being a goat so you could compare and let's compare him to other people like who's a better actor or whose movies would you rather see so who's contemporaneous with him someone who started in the 80s and is still doing movies well Cruz. Cruz is much more charismatic. Cruz is a much more kind of, if you had to be stuck with somebody's filmography uh, for the rest of your life, who would you pick? I'd rather pick Cruz. Cruz has got range. He's got comedies. He's got dramas. I'd pick Cruz. Cruz is much better actor than Hanks. Who else? Denzel. Denzel, better actor than Hanks by far. Much more charismatic. The other thing about Hanks is like, Hanks can't be sexual. Denzel can be sexual. Tom Tom Cruise, early on in his like, especially in his career, he can be sexual. It's just, Hanks is not masculine. He's never been masculine. And maybe that's why he was popular for some time because middle American dad types with dad bods liked Cruise because maybe they vicariously saw themselves in him but he's not magnetic 
He's not charismatic. Who else? I would take Russell Crowe over him. Though career, though career wise, Crow's career isn't as long. I would take Harrison Ford over Tom Hanks. I think Ford is a better actor, especially in his peak. And look, he's still kicking in 1923. I would take Brad Pitt over Hanks. And people might say, well, he's got two Academy Awards. So what? He didn't deserve those Academy Awards. And the Academy Award is solely based on like who you're up against and then who your film studio is doing an effective enough campaign for you to win the Academy Award. I mean, a classic example of that is, is Harvey Weinstein with Miramax. I mean, he was just amazing with those, the, the Oscar campaign. So look, I mean, I'm not, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying Hanks isn't an iconic American. And I will always watch Sleepless in Seattle and some of his great movies. Castaway is a great movie. And I'm not saying he doesn't have any screen presence. All I'm saying is that he is overrated. And she would be never put in the same breath with Pacino, with De Niro, with Anthony Hopkins, and with the aforementioned as one of the best actors of the last 50 years, in my humble opinion. I will post a poll at the Cinema Rag Facebook group, you give me your take. I'd love to hear from you. Until next time, take care, God bless, and pray. Thanks for listening to the Cinema Rag. Please post an honest review on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcast. Check out the episode notes to visit our website and to make a donation. Lastly, follow the rag today. Until next time.